arriva va bajo va centro va dentro. Oh, up, up, down, yes. central, right? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. 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 That's what Fred was talking about. Yeah. Oh, my mom is dead. My mom is dead. Nah, Fred, you can confirm this. I can definitely yeah, confirm no, that. No. I can see myself coming back later and partying at Picado. I mean, look at this. New York City has never been known for Mexican food. But from 2000 to 2010, Mexicans were New York City's fastest growing ethnic group. That means while there was great Mexican food in Corona, Queens, now even Manhattan restaurants are starting to serve some deep cut dishes from Puebla and Oaxaca. We're going on a massive journey with our cameraman, Fred, who is half Mexican and half Korean, to check out everything from Mezcal to Mole, from Mocajete to Aztecan to Coyos. Hit that like button and let's go. All right, our first spot on this video is Barrio Chino in the Lower East Side. You know, they do have a mix of some Tijuana dishes, but also some Aztecan dishes as well. Uh, is it kind of funny being here uh, and it's called Barrio Chino, Fred? Well, uh, my family does call me Chino and because I'm half Korean and half uh, Mexican, even though it's not the same Chino and Korean, but you know, eating here kind of feels like I'm at home. All right, so the food has arrived here at Barrio Chino, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking it might be a little bit hipsterized. Listen, we are still in the Lower East Side. However, they got some deep cut dishes like this one. This is not your normal uh, basic corn tortillas. What they got is inside is some cheese. We got some crema, which is, you know, uh, I don't know how to say that in English. Um, I think this is pretty cool. This is my first time having uh, glucoyos, and glucoyos is actually an indigenous Mexican word. Um, from the pre-Hispanic days. So, let's try it. Mmm. Oh yeah. Oh, that's like a thick, fluffy corn cake right there. I only had this like a couple times in my life. Yo, I think it's pretty cool how the hipster spots are even taking it deeper than just tacos now. They're even offering some more like kind of indigenous foods, you know, things that might more come from Puebla or Oaxaca. Guys, we're looking at some uh, camarones borrachos, which is basically drunken shrimp. Uh, what they do here is they sizzle this in uh, tequila, uh, so that's why they call it borrachos, because borrachos means drunk. So how would you use borrachos in a sentence to describe somebody? Hey, yo, like, see that guy over there? That's un borracho, bro. Like, he's straight up drunk. Yeah, he's on his ass. Camarones borrachos. <clears throat> this is the first time I'm having this dish. Mmm. Wow, I taste the tequila in it. Ooh, that is sweet. I think it's cool because, you know, a lot of other cultures, such as Chinese, we have our drunken dishes that are cooked in like wine usually, but this one's cooked in tequila. Makes I, sense. Fred, I know that where your mom's from in Mexico, maybe seafood isn't the biggest, but hey man, it's Camarones. Tastes like apples, straight up. Tastes like apples, spicy apples. Looking at some enchiladas verde. Uh, they spread some crema around, we got some cheese, frijoles, they got some avocados. Ooh, we got some chicken in here, in the tortillas. Wow. What I like about this is that they have a, a nice wooden plate or bowl for the tortillas. And you know when it's authentic when they bring you a bowl of tortillas with a, with a napkin on top. In my hand, I have a tuna tostada. It's a spicy sauce on top of some raw tuna, on top of some guacamole, on top of a tostada. But man, this looks like it has some Chinese chili oil on top. Mmm. Wow. One thing that we're gonna really try to do in this video is explore as many regional Mexican cuisines as we can in Lower Manhattan. I get it. I think that there is quite a lot of food in Brooklyn and Queens that may be more authentic. But guys, I think it is important to note that Manhattan is really increasing its traditional Mexican food. Like we said, from places like Oaxaca, Puebla, you know, with a little bit more Aztecan influence. So I'm really excited. All right, Fred, we are here at a spot called Cuatlo Morelos, and your mother is actually from Cuatlo Morelos. Morelos being the Mexican state, Cuatlo is the city inside of that state. It's kind of in between Mexico City and Puebla. So here we have a Cuatlo like dinner plate. Yeah. Does this look familiar to you or is this something that maybe you only would have had if you grew up there? Okay, the only thing I do recognize here is this and the Mexican cheese. Okay. 
I mean, this is like, I have, yeah, this is the only two things I remember, and I had fun eating them for sure. I, w I was told that this plate really represents koala because it, it brings all the agriculture and the meat together on one plate. You know, you have cactus, jalapeno, onion. Yeah, Go yeah, for it, man. Uh, koala has like a lot of rivers. For sure, don't think. Yeah, I mean. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, no, this is good. No, this is actual authentic. Tacos, freshly made tortillas. This is the cochinita pabil. I'm about to try it. I love all those fresh little toppings that they put on with the with the peppers and stuff. Mmm. No. Oh. One of the best tacos I've had in a long time. Fred, you gotta try this, man. Yeah, that's what's up. Yo, my my amigo, you gotta try the the the, the side of that. Oh Fred, you were saying that. You actually understood their Spanish here better than any other uh, Mexican spot that we've been to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back in, since I grew up with my mom, she only like speaks Spanish to me, and her accent I'm like very used to. But every other like people with like different accent, whenever they talk to me, I'm, I'm understanding like 80%, 70% of them. But here, I'm understanding like a full 100% of what they're saying. And that's because we are here at a spot called Cuadro Morelos, and that's where your mom's from. Dead. It all makes sense, guys. Make something happen. You got it. You got it, friend. And put it with the with the cactus too. I want to see you eat everything. Okay, yeah. Let's get all the three meats in there: the cheese, the meat, oh! the chicken, the steak, and make sure you put some cactus in the onion. Fred, we in the multiverse right now. I'm I'm doing it for you, rare. Throw that little onion on top. Oh, that's oh. quite a lot to the max. All right, guys. That's mucho quite a lot. You know, guys, th th what, I, what I love about Mexican restaurants is you can always bet on them being very, very inviting, you know, and especially when they can tell that obviously you have a genuine interest in, you know, Mexican culture and their food. So everybody's cool, man. It's just, it's been a good time. We've met a lot of, a lot of nice people doing this video, man. Yo, what's Mexicans? We all about love? Oh, definitely y'all love. Y'all yeah, about yeah. love. <laughs> what part of Mexico is this menu from? Okay, we have a different thing that is coming from different parts. The quesadilla is coming from the north, the uh, shrimp taco that is coming from the south, and the uh, pork taco that is coming from like the middle region of Mexico. Because it's where we, um, we eat whatever we produce, it's what is going around. That's why in the uh, center of Mexico, Puebla, Oaxaca, uh, Mexico City, and a little bit above, we use a lot of pork. Right. In the south, I think it's been more like close to the coast. They use more fish and shrimp and all that kind of stuff. And the uh, birria is being made especially with beef and uh, lamb. So in the north, if, which is like a little bit more dry, is what they've been produced. Okay, so we're gonna get the shortbread birria ramen. What else do you recommend that we try? The tacos, get the pork and get the shrimp. Okay, for the tacos, pork and shrimp. Yeah. Can we get the bean tacos too? The bean tacos is, okay, this is a thing. A lot of people, they don't know, but when you are like a vegetarian, the beans combine it with the tortilla, those two grains making a basic protein that you can substitute for a meat. Okay. So that's why you put it on the menu or something it's still Okay, the, uh, right, right, right. But that's, that's not traditional Mexican. No. All right, you, you guys, Mexicans do not eat vegan stuff. No, we That's are, not no, Mexican. You, the, the Fred, you can confirm this. I can definitely yeah, confirm no that. Vegans, no, we do not. All. all right, what's going on, everybody? We're here with Willie. Um, you're originally from Puebla, Mexico, um, and, and you guys are serving all different regions of Mexican food here, right? Yes, sir. So, so what are we looking at? Tell me what's traditional and what's not traditional. Okay. This one is the street food, yeah. which is being called the esquites. It's like a corn on the cup, okay. but just in a little plate. But you know? but not um, okay esquites. Okay, esquites. Go. This one is the uh, shrimp tacos, which mm -hmm. is with a little mango and cucumber salad. Okay, a little chipotle mayo to nice. give it a little spiciness. And this is nice. from the south. Of and Mexico. this is from the south of Mexico. Okay. And this is the carnitas, which is basically from the uh, middle of the uh, the Mexico. Then we use like pork to be like feeding most of the time. Okay. Where they eat a lot of pork we in the eat middle a lot of the pork in the middle section. Okay, and then we and have this. This one is a mix from Asia and uh, Mexico. We are trying to combine something to make a new plate, which is being called the ramen, but in all versions. Mmm, the birria ramen right here. Yes. Ooh. The meat is being cooked for like more than so, five minutes. So you're hours saying this is half down. Mexican, half Asian, just like Fred. Yeah, like Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, thank you. 
Well, Fred, so what's it like for you to be eating like, you know, at all these Mexican spots that are serving different regions of food? Uh, Andrew, uh, growing up as a kid, I'd be eating a lot of Mexican food and honestly, like, no, no one really taught me how to like what each food was originated from. So it's cool to see that there are a lot of like foods around Mexico and each region has its own formalities. Then I'm learning, I'm learning every day. Yeah, and I love how Willie was so helpful in saying like, yo, in the central part of Mexico, they eat a lot of pork and then they eat a lot of beef in different parts and a lot of shrimp in the other parts. But yo, first dish we gotta go into is their eye-catching dish. They got the birria ramen. I know a lot of other spots out there are trying to do their own version, but I'm really excited to try this, Fred. Yo, Fred. They call this, this what, the ramen? Yeah, the ramen, man. Half Asian, half Mexican, just like you. I'm eating my soap right now. What did he say? Hey. Oh. Mm. I would say with the type of noodles that they're using here, it actually does kind of remind me of a pho, but really more like a Vietnamese bowl call, where the consomme is very, very deep and beefy, and then you have the, the pieces of beef floating around. So I gotta say, this is probably uh, of the birria ramens I've had or the kind of Mexican Asian fusions I've had, man, this one really, really works because it actually kind of feels sort of like some version of an Asian dish I've already had. Got here is a skitas, which is also known as uh, elote in vaso, which is basically, you know, corn in a cup, which is a popular side or snack um, in Mexico. Here I got a shrimp taco with mango from the south of Mexico, but please don't be mad, Fred. I kind of want to put the esquites on my taco. Is that? No, no, it's, not, it's not wrong. It's not wrong, man. You, you do you. It's all Mexican food, man. Yeah, it's all I'm trying to mishmash the regions. Let's go. Let's eat this. Mmm. Mmm. I had this a lot as a kid growing up. My mom would make this like almost every Friday. So guys, these are like the carnitas. Uh, we eat this a lot in a lot of central Mexico. Uh, basically, you know, pork tacos. Oh yeah, put that lime in for sure. Another side note, we add a lot of lime to a lot of our food, for sure. As we finish up here, I wash down my carnitas tacos with some horchata. And I wash mine down with um, a good old jicama. Yo, here's to uh, exploring Mexican food in New York City. Last but not least, we got the tamarindo, which is uh, another drink we got. So what was your favorite dish here? I'm gonna say my favorite dish is the ramen and the esquita. Oh, mine was the esquita on the shrimp taco, which I had to do for round two. We have bean tacos, which are a little bit less common because, you know, most people in Mexico would eat meat. But Fred, you have eaten, you know, these elements together before. I have, I have. But oh. maybe not in taco form. It's for the vegan crowd, that's why. All right, guys, bean tacos. Okay. Okay. The beans are really good. I didn't expect this to be like the beans to be what, like that good. What of, makes good uh, frijoles? Uh, good frijoles. I mean, depends on how like long you cook the beans for, for sure. But um, the way he cooked it, really, I give you give you props. This is really good. But it's an historical and historical animal because many people thought that. The, uh, the Ajolote was a dragon. That's why his name is Water Monster. Oh. In Spanish. This animal, it's like an endemic species from Mexico because almost, I think that the 80 to 90% of the species only born on one part of Mexico. That is the, do you know what is Trajineras? The boat in uh -huh. Xochimilco, oh, okay. in the city of Mexico. All right, man, what are we looking at? This one is the handmade tortillas, tostadas for the ceviche. This one is the side of rice and beans that came with the arrachera la mexicana. This one is the ceviche. Tacos de barbacoa, arrachera la mexicana, and elote placero. And all this is 100% authentic to the style that the, how they would cook it in Mexico. In my opinion, this, one, this is more than 100% Mexican and everything is awesome in this place. Uh, and also, what is this? The michelada, the meat from Mexico. The real meat covered with tahini, and it's delicious. All right, well, hey, Mitch the Khan, guys, 
is actually the Aztecan afterlife, right? Yeah. All right, you guys, we're at Miklan right now, and that is actually the Aztecan afterlife where there's nine levels and a hairless dog actually has to guide you. I didn't know any of this stuff. Really cool that they have all these philosophies here, but we got to look at this pan Mexican food, guys. This is ceviche verde. I've got the tostadas. I've got barbacoa. I got lamb tacos, fresh made tortillas they just made with arancheta. Ah! First up, of course, we got the appetizer. This is uh, ceviche verde, green verde, uh, more coastal Mexico. But like we said, obviously the restaurants in America, they serve everything from every region, whereas maybe in Mexico, it'd just be one region or two. Oh my goodness. On top, they've got some sweet potato just to smooth out the vinegar from the ceviche. You guys, I know the ceviche is a little bit deeper cut Mexican dish. You know, they're not gonna have it at any American gringo spots. Try it, it's legit. This is the Aranchera. This is from Northern Mexico where all the beef comes from. Like we said, guys, beef is from the North. Lamb, goat, pork, more in Central, and of course, seafood in the South. That's generally how the regions break down. All right, you guys, I am making a taco out of the aranchera. Of course, rice and beans. They said they did not make this tortilla until I ordered this dish. Not just made today, fresh five minutes ago. Guys, I have never had an aranchera a la Mexicana steak before drenched with the tomatoes and the pickles and the onions. I'll tell you this, these beans are really high quality. I have never, ever had pinto beans ground up like this with this quality and this depth of flavor in my entire life. You guys, it is super important to try these deep cut dishes like this aranchera a la mexicana. Um, do I think that this would replace my love of like dry steak? No, I don't think so. But listen, everybody eats tacos. Everybody loves burritos. You gotta get into the history in the regions, north, central, south, Mitzplan. All right, here I got the barbacoa tacos. It's lamb meat, guys. I don't eat lamb tacos very often. And by the way, listen, if you've said you actually love Mexican food multiple times in your life, and you don't try to venture out and go to spots like this, especially spots that are trying to educate you about, you know, the Day of the Dead uh, traditions, where they come from, the fact that it's Aztecan, you know, just, just, just to let you know, guys, Chinese food is not only beef and broccoli too, just like Mexican food is not only tacos, although tacos are delicious. Let's go. Mmm. Wow. I know in Central Mexico before beef was easier to get, they were eating a lot of lamb and goat. And honestly, guys, you know, birria tacos started out with goat meat before it all turned to beef. It's just because, you know, goat's not as popular of a meat to eat in America. So of course, most people serve the beef ones. But yeah, it started as goat meat. So just to let you know, you know, goat is a, uh, is a tasty meat. In my hand, I have what is said to be one of the best elote in the city. And elote is essentially like esquites, is what we had earlier, except this is on a cob. It's not cut off. Mmm. Wow. I've had elote off the cart before at a fair. I've had it here. Man. This is pretty good. I can't remember the last time I was eating corn off the cob anyways. What I love about going around New York trying food is that when you go into some of these ethnic restaurants, they make the experience so authentic. You know, in previous generations, maybe a couple decades ago, even Chinese food had to be New York style Chinese food. But now you can get a real authentic Chinese experience like they're having in China right now. So. You know, I got my michelada right here. I'm learning a lot about the Aztecan traditions. Dios dos los moretes. It, I'm, it's got a crazy vibe. It's playing reggaeton. It's, it's exciting. Mm. Man, we could not leave here without trying the tres leches cake. It's one of my favorite cakes in the entire world. It means three milks. There's three different types of milk. I know condensed milk is one of them. The other two, I forgot, but it's delicious. Ha ha, let's try it. Ooh. Wow. It's pretty good. 
Oh man, we trying the barbacoa. Stop sleeping on the goat and lamb. All right, we doing a shot? Of course, Abe, hey, man, that's how you know Mithlam, Mithlam was authentic. We had to do a shot of it. We doing tequila, man? Mezcal. 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 All right. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. You have a rompe corazón mezcal. It's from uh, from Oaxaca. They made it with agave. Oh, okay. Okay. It's a little smoke and uh, it's smooth. Okay. Right, let's do it. So instead of lime, we do we, oranges. What do yes. we say? Mezcal goes with oranges. Do okay. Say, uh, salud. Yeah. Salud. 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 Hey. Arriba, arriba, abajo, 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 al centro, al centro, y adentro. Oh, up, yeah. down, central, right? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what Fred was talking about. Yeah. Mm. I like doing it with the orange. I like the orange. We are gonna order one of each every taco here at El Cabron. Ten tacos, one of each meat here at El Cabron. I'm gonna be stuffed. These people are from Puebla. It says it right here. Dude, all I see is some Aztec features over here, some nice good imagery of uh, back in the days Aztec. And you can see over here we got some Marachi, Dias de la Muertos type stuff. Uh, and I appreciate the, a lot of themes going on. All right, everybody, we're here at El Cabron on Essex Street. And this spot years ago, when it opened, was one of the most authentic taco spots in all of Lower Manhattan here. It started as this little stall here. And I remember several years ago when I was in New York, it was just this stall. And now they expanded, they bought this whole space and they really made it, made it feel really like homely. Like, how'd you feel inside there, Fred? When I walked in straight up, I felt like I was walking my own temple. Right. right. I mean, there was like, you know, hints of Puebla. There's all these different like authentic you know, garbs and stuff like that, you know, Mexican clothing. So it was really cool. We got here some lamb, carnitas, and pastor. Okay, I'm gonna go, uh, you wanna try the lamb one? I'm down for the lamb, let's go, go for the go, lamb. Go. Here, let me squeeze, lime everything, right? Lime everything, you Now, what it. do you think about the uh, radish? Should we put that radish on top? Yeah, yeah, it's optional. You know, you don't have to, but you know, most people do. Well, you know, I feel like they give you the radish. Let's do the radish. Here. Yeah, I'll go for with the radish. An interesting fact that in Mexico, there's a lot of lamb and goat we usually eat, um, but in here in America, we don't really have that much lamb and goat, so we just go with substitute meats, you know, chorizo, things like that, pork. All right, well, hey, you can get lamb tacos in Lower East Side. Let's go. I got the carnitas. Even though we don't have that much lamb in America, but the lamb here is not bad. A little verde, let's go. Round two, I got the chorizo. It's very bright red, and then you got the... Uh... The pastor. Yeah, al pastor. You want a little sauce? Yes, sir. A little sauce right there, wet it up. Let's go. Mmm. Mmm. That sauce makes it. I rarely ever see chorizo this bright red. It's got flavor. Okay, round three, we got some of the most classic flavors here. I have a uh, chicken one, pollo, not tinga, just regular pollo. And then you got the carne asada one. It's very common. A lot of people like this. It's good to eat tacos with different flavors, different meats, because you know they're not that big of a portion, so you can take a bite to the set to the side and keep eating more. Round four, we got the seafood. Uh, we got the pescado, aka the fish, and then we have the spicy shrimp, aka the camarones. Um, you know the cooks here and the owners here are from Puebla, so in Puebla it is landlocked, so maybe traditionally they don't eat as much shrimp and fish, but you know, hey, like we said in America, they're just kind of mixing all the uh, different types of the territories, yeah. I think the spicy shrimp one might be one of the best ones. Mmm. Yeah. Yep. Yo, but I think the sauce, I think it's a sriracha sauce. What is it, chipotle sauce? <laughs> it's popping. <laughs> you said sriracha. Sriracha is the Asian chipotle sauce, essentially. Oh. Guys. Definitely come to El Carbone and get the shrimp. All right, last round, I'm ending off with the tinga de pollo and then you got the vegetable one. How would you say this vegetable taco in Spanish? Uh, I'm just gonna say taco de vegetales. I'm gonna say that. All right, let's go. 
Mmm. Tapping it up here at El Cabron, I would say like definitely uh, the flavor of tinga, the spicy, you know, flavoring that we call tinga and mole poblano are definitely two flavors that I had so much more of while doing this video. You know, those are usual things that are a little bit deeper cut. Throughout this video, we've been through a lot of restaurants and a lot of vegan options. And I would like to say that most of the options were pretty good. It, Did they surprise you? Yeah, they surprised me a whole lot. So sure. you believe now Mexican food can be vegetarian and good? I'm converting. I'm converting. <laughs> All right, you guys, our next new Mexican spot in the LES is Viva Viria. Fred, what do you know about these Viria tacos? Because everybody knows that this is like, this is almost like the new way in 2022 that everybody's going towards. Uh, Viria tacos, honestly, is one of the best tacos you can have in New York City. Uh, traditionally, you have goat meat, but you know, obviously they would substitute it with regular beef. But as long as they have the nice juicy, uh, spread, spread apart in your mouth type of beef, um, I would say it's a pretty good taco. And, and originally, now that it's like everywhere in Mexico and everywhere obviously in the US, but it originally comes from what, Jalisco? Jalisco, yeah. Jalisco is where they originated from. What you looking at, man? I mean, what do you got? I, you, I see you got the red shell. I heard they fry the shell in like uh, a red chili oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they would grill it in a hot chili oil and it turns out to be a crispy, uh, crispy tacos. And then, you know, this spot is very 2022 because I got a vegan media right here with a vegan consomme. So back in the days, that was not a thing. <laughs> right. That, that is, that is abstract. All right, Fred, I know that they had these in LA for like five years, obviously in Mexico for way longer. In New York, how long has media been popular? Video has been popular for at least three years. So honestly, you can see how the, the, shell, or the shell is very crispy and that's what they did is that they take a soft shell uh, tortilla and they grill it with hot chili oil. And that's why you can see it's red around the shell. I actually got a uh, chicken mole media and of course you've got the beef, but like we said, the most classic is the goat. Why don't you go for it, man? Like we said, guys, we are only exploring new Mexican concepts in the LES for the longest time. All the authentic Mexican food in New York was more so in Corona, Queens, outside of, you know, the city, but it's coming here. So, cheers. Cheers, salud. Make sure you dip it in the sauce. Like we said, guys, this is the beef consomme. You can see how they added in the cheese, and that's very important in video taco. The meat definitely is high quality. You can tell by as it uh, goes into your mouth, it melts and spreads apart each bite, and that's when you can tell that it's a, it's a real good video taco. Yeah, and I believe uh, when it has the cheese, it's queso video. Fred, we know that uh, your mom's Mexican, your dad's Korean, but uh, from a very traditional Latino upbringing, right? So what do you think about the vegan media? Honestly, I, I would not eat it. It's uh, sus? No, I would not eat it if it was get presented to me, but I'm gonna try it. In the vegan consomme too. This is the first time Fred is jeopardizing his machismo to try the vegan media concept. Fred, you a man. Try the vegan. Show it, show it, show it. This guy, <laughs> <laughs> this guy acting like it. Nah, nah, I'm telling <laughs> I'm telling you, it's good as shit, man. Just say what's real. Say how you really what do you know. Think? Dude, this video taco, vegan taco, is probably one of the best tacos I've had. Regardless, not being me. That's really this guy capping so Bro. hard. This guy capping like Cap G. You guys, know, do you know what it's made out of? No. It's made out of jackfruit. Jackfruit, jackfruit. you know how jackfruit is like a Southeast Asian fruit? I don't know that. Yo, jackfruit is really delicious, guys. If you guys ever had jackfruit chips, incredible. If I'm being honest with you, David, this is disgustingly good. I would eat this on a regular basis. This man said it's disgustingly good. You think that's better than the beef here? Be real. No, <laughs> no, but it's still good. All right, you guys, so we just got done trying some new age media tacos here in the LES. Where are we off to next? We're gonna about to go to some more deep cut Mexican food around New York City. What can you tell us about Couché that's unique and also like new to the New York environment? Couché is a restaurant uh, owned by um, Chef Julia Medina. He's, uh, he has several restaurants in the city. This one is his latest one. Uh, he's, um, you know, he has a couple of Midtown, uh, 14th Street. 
This one is a little bit different because it's more like uh, what you find in small towns, like in Puebla and Oaxaca. So it's more like a home style cooking. Would you say um, it's a style of Mexican food that's difficult to find in New York? It might be more common outside in Corona or maybe not even in America. Definitely, definitely. That like you'll, you'll find spots like small spots in, uh, you know, like Queens and Jackson Heights and Roosevelt. You'll find a spot where like people are cooking this kind of style. So this is the same thing, but with a little more flair. This is not gringo Mexican. It's not. <laughs> where is most of the food from, like in like the general Mexican restaurants in New York City? Where are they usually from? Like, is it from Mexico City, Jalisco, Tijuana? What, how would you describe? That's, uh, that's actually a big list. You know, uh, I feel like most people start with tacos. You know, tacos are like they're everywhere in in Mexico, uh, but some people focus more on taco, tacos from Mexico City. Uh, and then they start going, a lot of restaurants, they just mix. You know, they add Different things. regions. They don't, they're not even focusing on one specific region. They just add, and, and that's why a lot of people get you know confused with what Mexican food is, because they will mix like tacos with like enchiladas and, and uh, birria from this from Yucatan. And you know, they, they, they mix a lot of stuff. So this one is more like an authentic, like, you know, Oaxaca and, and uh, uh, Puebla. All right, you guys, we are looking at the craziest mocajete that I have ever seen in my entire life. We've got a chicharron chip. We've got some really crazy camarones, shrimp. We got a big piece of cheese. We got all types of stuff. So mocajete, guys, is actually derived from an Aztecan word for mortar and pestle. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, you guys. This is one of the best things I've eaten all month, no cap. Honestly, it sounds crazy, guys. I can taste some of the volcanic rock, which is actually the mortar and pestle that it's inside of, which is defining of the mocajete. Chorizo, green onion bulb. All right, Dave is hyping up this mocajete, and I'll tell you this, man, the presentation as well. I'm gonna take some of this Mexican cheese, the quesilla, I'm gonna put it on my purple corn. I might take a little, oh, this blistered pepper. Wow, I split in half. I'm gonna only use part of that, because that's crazy. And then I'm gonna get some chicken. Let me get a little onions, a little rice and beans. Wow, look at that. Purple corn tortilla, let's go. Let's go. Oh. Mmm. Mm. You know, in Chinese culture, we have clay pots. And in Mexican culture, they got mocajete pots. Mm. I don't think every Mexican restaurant is going to serve this dish, but if you get the chance to try a good one, definitely order the mocajete plate. Mm. One of the dishes they're most known for is their mole poblano. This is a chicken thigh in some delicious mole. Mm, oh, oh, that's chicken breast. Okay, let's get it. And uh, yeah, basically, like this is not a dish that you're gonna find at any sort of gringo spots. Obviously, it's either gonna be an authentic mom and pop spot that's very cheap, or a spot like Kuche, who's trying to, you know, expose people to this dish. So I got my little rice and beans, mole poblano. Mmm. Wow, very sweet, nutty. Got a lot of seasoning. You know, there's almost a little bit of sense that it almost tastes like a curry at this point. Like a dark, kind of like almost Japanese curry, but it got a little bit more of that earthy spiciness. It's really good here, guys. This, to me, is a great introduction to mole. Cause you know, a lot of people not really on mole yet. Mm. For those who haven't had mole, it's almost like a chocolatey curry. I really recommend you guys try it. It's a little bit sweet. Um, man, you know it, and maybe the kids aren't really on it, but if they had this one, I think everybody would like mole. Right here, I got what they call a machete, and I do think the story is that it is based off of the machete knife that a lot of the farmers are used. Um, so it's kind of like a uh, quesadilla, but it's got a little bit extra things. So let's cut it up. Get a oh, nice are you using a machete to cut the machete? Woo! Wow, 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 look at that. Purple corn, just like that. I think you got a little, uh, you know, spicy chicken in there. Let's get it. My very first machete. Mmm. Tastes a lot, kind of like things that you might find in a torta, 
except more into a quesadilla style. Um, it's pretty good and man, it kind of tastes like a sandwich. Here's a dish that I've never had before. This is tacos placeros. And placeros means plaza. And I think that's because a lot of like life in Mexico is, you know, centered around like plazas, you know, where people gather and stuff like that. So this chicken right here looks a little bit like a chicken cutlet or chicken katsu. So who knows, they might have similar roots. So this might be like a, you know, more recent dish of the last hundred years. All right guys, ooh, tons of cheese and guacamole on top. Mmm. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm here with a little lime. Put a little verde sauce on there. Might get a little bit of uh, pickled onions. Wow, adds a little pink to it. That's cool. Tacos placeros. Mm. I think Kuche is a really, really cool restaurant because even five years ago, you would have not have expected to ever see a restaurant this kind of high-end and hipster and cool that is serving Puebla and Oaxacan food. So I'm really glad that they're bringing it to market. Um, I want to see them be successful because the flavors are very different and it's just kind of showing a new side of Mexican food. You know, we are always talking about all the different sides of Chinese food and I'm just excited to see the different sides of Mexican food because Mexican food is very, very vast. There's a lot of different regions and a lot of different areas. So I'm excited to explore even more, but shout out to Kuchin. All right, we're here in the Lower East Side here at Factory Tamal, and this is one of the few spots in the city that you can buy actual tamales at. The owners are from Puebla, and a lot of the stuff on the menu is very authentic, and some of it is like kind of new fusion stuff. All right, I got my food here at Factory Tamal. Um, you know, most of this food is based off of food that you would find in Puebla City, the capital of Puebla. And all of it's all pretty authentic, except for this one. This one is the Ludlow Torta, and it has like pastrami in it. Obviously, you know, that's like the New York one. But let me try the Tinga one first, because this is the authentic one. Ooh, ooh, take a look how juicy that is. The greens, the Tinga, the spicy chicken, the tomato, the jalapenos, let's go. Mmm, that's a good spicy chicken sandwich. I feel like most spicy chickens in America are based off of the Mexican Tinga spicy chicken. That's just my feeling. All right, next tamale is the Rajas con queso. I believe that is like peppers and cheese. Oh, this one looks delicious. Get a little cheese stretch in there. Oh! Mmm. Spicy, cheesy, that's one of my favorites so far. All right, next up, I have the Salsa Verde chicken. Man, I just think it's really cool to be able to get tamales up the street from where I live. Guys, we have like a lot of Mexican spots in New York City that you've seen in this video. A lot of fusion spots, some authentic spots, some spots that remind you of Jackson Heights, Queens, um, and some spots that, you know, maybe remind you of LA. Mm. Verde chicken with the green. Mm. You know, it's hard to find such a homemade dish here in New York City sometimes. And man, you know, we actually had Mexican neighbors back in the Seattle area that we grew up in. And when they first moved in, they would exchange tamales with us as we exchanged like dumplings and like other things with them so I thought that was like a really cool cultural exchange it kind of reminds me of that because honestly nowadays I don't get the chance to eat a lot of tomorrow's buenos dias everybody we'll be looking at some desayuno food which is you know breakfast food in Mexico yeah these are really simple dishes from an Elia spot called Puebla the people who own this spot are from Puebla Mexico uh, which is near Oaxaca we are looking at a chili releños this is pollo and mole poblano this is huevos a la mexicana. I believe right here, this is adobo de puerco. This is chiquiles. And this is huevos rancheros. Yo, Fred, do I know how to speak Spanish or what? Well, you know how to speak Spanish. You got, you got, you got <laughs> all right, all right, I did say huevos a la mexicana. Fred, for the uninitiated, what is a chili releño? So basically what they did is they put, uh, fill it up with uh, cheese sticks and they fry it with egg. Okay, so yeah, this is almost like a omelet, but with a uh, 
egg thing right here. Andrew, I know, Andrew, I know this is one of Andrew's favorite dishes. Chili Rileño. Fred, you saw me using my fork. I, I can do this though, right? Oh, you can, you can. But we, what you can do is also is using tortillas and grabbing, uh, scooping up some uh, frijoles con arroz, con mole. We just dig it up like this and we just eat it with our hands. Okay. Oh, oh! Oh my goodness, guys. Hey, I'm not gonna lie. The Chili Rileño, it almost tastes like a little bit like dad's like Cantonese like egg. Um, David, did you, did you know that mole is made out of three chili sauces? I actually had no idea what mole was. Like, a, literally, I had no idea what mole was. I know that it's something that more like Mexicans eat though. Like like the the Western people who enjoy Mexican food, they wouldn't even get into mole. Oh, it's good. The mole is good. Uh, I think this one got messed up a little bit in delivery, but this is huevos a la mexicana. What is this, Fred? Uh, what you're looking at here is just some eggs with ham, with jalapenos, mix it with some frijoles, which is black beans over here. Huevos a la mexicana. Mm. Uh, well, this is adobo de puerco. This is the green sauce. I heard that you can also get it with the red sauce. We've got chiquiles and we got huevos rancheros, which just means rancher style eggs, because I know that a lot of people do farm work. Interestingly enough, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, Fred, I heard that chiquiles is a word that comes from the Aztec language. David, you are not wrong about that. Oh, oh, see, Fred, you gotta show me. I don't know. David, just do it like how Fred uh, does it. I wanna be cultural. Oh. Do it like how Fred does it. Rip your tortilla oh. in half. Okay, okay, you don't take yeah, a yeah, whole yeah, bite. yeah, yeah. Rip yeah. your tortilla in half, grab the meat, grab the rice, grab the um, chili, get the beans, and just eat, eat that whole, yeah. You guys, adobo de puerco. Oh my goodness, man, the adobo de puerco, pretty, pretty spicy. No, it is. That green sauce, that green chili, that's packing some punch. Fred, how are we gonna eat the chiquiles if there's already a tortilla underneath it? All you gotta do is grab a knife, cut that in half. Go for it, go for it, man. Half, yeah. Yo, I heard that the word chiquiles comes from the Nahuatl language, which is actually was the main language of the Aztecs. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at Fred with the chiquiles going crazy. Uh, let, yeah, let me, let me get some of the bacon, man. Chiquiles. It tastes different. <laughs> it tastes different than the tortilla. Fred, does this remind you of stuff that you ate growing up? Um, actually, honestly, as a kid, I remember um, back in like what middle school. Every morning, not every morning, but occasionally, my mom would. Um, she's from Morelos, Cuatla, and she would make beans, eggs, and with a side of bacon. And uh, yeah, this brings me back. These are some very, very home style, homemade dishes, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, these are very home style. Um, this really brings me back to when I was a kid eating it. Um, there's a lot of flavor into it for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and say my favorite was the chili rileño, or actually the huevos a la mexicana, the really simple one and the really complicated one. What was your favorite? Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the, the mole. mole. Oh, the yeah, mole, though, and you're not even that big of a mole guy, right? Not really, but like, even though it's not that spicy, but it's like cater to like um, a lot of um, Americans, but I'm also like kind of half American, half like Mexican, so uh, it's, it's, it works for me. All right, guys, we got two Sodero tacos, and this originated in Mexico City, and the meat here is from like the middle portion of the cow's leg and belly, so like in the middle over there, which is the Sodero meat. And this is um, very common in uh, street vendors, uh, you can find this in your tortas too, so let's we'll just give it a try. The meat smooth. Let me add some lime here. Mm. Um, what I like about this taco is that they added a radish here, and it's like you don't really see that like in most of like um. Hispanic restaurants or out here in New York, but this makes it a little bit more authentic. All right, Caesar, what we got going on at Casa Bocado, man? So at Casa Bocado, we have some authentic Mexican food. So we have three examples right here in front of you. Over here, we have some taquitos, some shredded beef with some tamarind crema fresca and a nice coleslaw on top. 
Right next to it, we have the churro sundae, homemade churros coated with cinnamon sugar, vanilla ice cream, mezcal whipped cream, a elote, esquites, the Mexican style street corn. You have some chipotle salsa, tajim, cojita cheese, and lime. Right, and even you guys put the, the agua, the water, in a tequila bottle, right? You have to, due to the fact that we are so busy during the weekend that on our first weekend, is a little fact, we sold 25 cases of Altos tequila. So we were like, why are we gonna throw it away? It's recycled. Right. So let's put the water there, and everybody knows that we're a tequila and mezcal house. Real quick, one question. Can you tell me about the development of the consumption of authentic Mexican food in New York? Because New York's not a place known for Mexican food. We needed to bring in something different. Everybody was so used to Tex-Mex and getting nachos and your, your, your quesadilla. That's not Mexico. Mexico is variety. More typical flavors that people want to try. So as long as you get into those flavors, people see the difference and they want to try it. So we have, you know, tried to incorporate everything and teach everybody as they come through the door that nachos are not Mexican. You know, yeah, we do have like taquiti, you know, the, the little chips, but they're not with shredded beef and, every, and everything else. It's just as a side. So flavors have to be consistent. You think people are starting to learn? They, they're learning. They are learning. Uh, we have a good following, which we are grateful for. And um, they come back for the flavor. Would you say you guys are happy to be part of this authentic Mexican movement? Yes, we are. All right, you guys, we're at Casa Bocado. They do a lot of authentic things, but they do have a slight twist. This is mezcal whipped cream with the churros, guys. And of course, a uh, skull that reminds me of Los Dias de Muertos. And I learned, Andrew, that on Los Dias de Muertos, Andrew, they're trying to find their way to Miklan. So it all connects, guys. I'm learning so much. Of course, you guys, I had to get the churros from Dias de los Muertos. You know, um, if you die, guys, we were learning earlier, man, you know, it's all the people from Miklan coming back. So there's a lot of like Aztecan and folklore. It's very dope. Okay. It's one of the best churros I ever had in my life. You guys, there's mezcal in this whipped cream. I'm telling you guys, that's authentic fusion at its best. All right, here I got the beef taquitos with tinga sauce. Tinga's kind of like, you know, oftentimes it's more tingo de pollo, which is like the spicy chicken sauce, but they're doing it with beef. Now, a lot of people think taquitos because I grew up eating the frozen ones that I didn't know if it was an authentic Mexican dish, but it really is. And here you can tell, it's almost like a fried tortilla stuff with it right there. Get some sauce, make sure I get some lettuce. It's gonna be super, super crunchy, watch this. Mmm. Mmm. I'm sure a lot of people out there, if they grow up eating, you know, American food, they've had some version of a taquito. But let me tell you, most of you probably haven't had an authentic, real taquito. And it is good. The tinga sauce is very, you know, spicy and a little bit smoky. And it's super, super crunchy. Of course, here we have the esquites. Um, that's pretty much just elote except off the cob. Um, we had it earlier on the cob, and it's cool to just try different versions because I'm trying to decide which one I prefer, but I like them both. There's something about eating it off the cob that is hard to replace, but this is just easier. Mmm. Okay. Definitely one of the better esquites I've had, and what I like about this is when it's off the cob, I can take it and scoop it onto something else. Oh! Throughout this video, I have realized for myself, and this is a me thing, that the esquites is a great complement to a lot of dishes. It's sweet, it's corny, it's a little creamy, got the cheese on it. Mm. In this video, we got to travel to a lot of different Mexican spots and each one has a different vibe. This one's supposed to be a little bit more fun. There's ones that are more serious, but I can tell you this, man, I can see myself coming back later and partying at Picado. I mean, look at this. All right, you guys, we're here at El Churro. It is owned by a Mexican, but apparently, Fred, did you know this? The churro is from Spain. Uh, no, I did not know that, but I... Uh, did you know that Spanish was from Spain? Oh yeah. Yeah. No, you didn't know? Oh, yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, can you help us introduce, what, what, what is this? Oh, uh, this is white chocolate. This is caramel, and this is that. Yes. Oh, okay. This is white chocolate. Mm -hmm. So this is gringo chocolate? Blanco chocolate? All right. Oh, white chocolate is pretty good. 
Probably made like a like a s'more, a little more. All right, my favorite it was honestly the uh, the white chocolate dip. This is what probably the best for me at least caramel. All right, so uh, we're with the owner of El Churro. What made you want to do this in such like a modern setting? Uh, we always want to do what we love, and that's what I love. And you love churro. I love churro, and I love uh, things to be nice and clean and sleek. And uh, we made it. Would you say that this is the most modern churro spot in the world? It's probably the most uh, New York churros in New York. Yeah. Okay. Hey, well they're good, so check it out. But when, when, when people not really go for it, they're not buying it. So they're like, why am I even Alright, so what do we got there? I got a quesadilla, the asada, that comes with, let me open it, this is my food, right? So, <laughs> That's your it, lunch, my It's my lunch, so my hands are kind of tight. So it has asada, cheese, and pico de gallo. Normally it comes with guac and cream, but I don't like this yet. I want to make You're trying to asada. keep it simple. I want to keep it simple. <laughs> so how would you describe the food that is served here? I would describe it as pretty good, very authentic. I mean, like, it's, a, it's very authentic? Yes. And then most people don't know what is the birria. Are, are you from Mexico? Mexico? I'm from Mexico City. Oh, you're from Mexico but City. But my parents, they're not, they're different states. Like, my dad is from Oaxaca, uh, and my mom is from Morelos. So there's three different things. Oh, Cuatla Morelos. Yes. Ah. And Shout out to Fred and Cuatla. Cuatla's the, yeah. Cuatla, Cuatla Morelos, yes. Awesome. Um, what is it like been like for you to educate people who probably only ate like Taco Bell? You know how some people on the East Coast. Listen, when I they tell me Taco Bell, I'm like, listen, Taco Bell is fast food. For me, that is just like a snack. I don't consider that Mexican. Do people ask for hard shell tacos? Yes, but there's some places that they do have it because of Texas. Be like Tex-Mex? Yes. Do you fuck with Tex-Mex Mexican food or you don't like it? Or you I, I have tried it. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm like, it's okay. What's your opinion on Taco Bell? Taco Bell, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I eat that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing compared to original Mexican food. When they tell me I want to cheat, this is not Mexican. Okay. Yeah. All right, you guys, we're at Taco Village and we had to get another version of BD ramen because this is a little bit more popular cart style. As you can see, it's the consomme, but underneath, boom, we got the Maruchan. Kong Tai Min, or like that's what we call it in Cantonese. This is just uh, instant noodles. Hey, honestly, shout out to the other spot, but this is the best video around and I ever had. It hits different when it's out of the Maruchan cup. Look, next up, you guys are looking at an Al Pastor de Milanesa. This is a very classic torta flavor. Very authentic here. Let's pop the top. Boom. This is like the first torta I ever had in New York City, so Taco Village. What are you doing, bro? I'm doing, you know, Andrew's behind the camera, so we can't do this, but I'm just trying to think about what he would do. No! All right, we got three tacos here. You got carne asada and chorizo mix, and then you got pescado, and then you got cactus. And these are some, um, I like how it's almost like very traditional, but kind of done in a more non-traditional way, I guess. You know, it looks a little bit more like updated, but cactus is very traditional. No foul. Mm. Yo, cactus. It's, it's kind of juicy, you got a nice little texture to it. It's a little bit sour, but overall, man, you guys gotta try it. It is a way to get your veggies in. Here I got Piscato, fish taco. Mm. Thank you. Take it to the Baja with that one. Champeno, half chorizo, half carne asada. Little green sauce. Mmm. That's a great mixture. It kind of reminds me of a pepperoni sausage pizza. You got two different types of meat. It's not too salty like chorizo might be if it was on its own, but it's got a little bit more salt than just beef. I think, I think the spot got such a vibe, man. They are definitely appealing to the millennial in me because they're playing all of Pharrell's old cuts. So. Shout out to Taco Village. Check it out when you're on McDougal. 
It's a gem out here. <laughs>